Welcome to ST Drums TV, and today we are turning an inexpensive used drum kit into a replica of one of the most iconic drum sets ever made. We will show you the steps we took and how you can do the same. On the way, you will learn a lot about the details of the Sonar Signature Series, Performer Series, and similar Sonar series from that era. So stay tuned for this brand new vintage drum adventure. Well, first of all, let's start with a little history lesson. Sonor, one of the oldest drum manufacturers in the world, was founded by Johannes Link in 1875. Over 100 years later, the grandson of Johannes, Horst Link, ran the company of Sonor and in the early 1980s they released the iconic Sonor Signature series. It was called Signature not because it was a bespoke drum made in cooperation with a famous drummer, it was actually called that because Horst Link's own signature was engraved on the badges of the drums. The Signature series was meant to set the highest standard in drum making and is a great representation of what people associate with German engineering. The drums were made of high quality components in Germany with some quite iconic features and a lot of attention to detail. The branding was used by Sonor throughout the 80s and 90s and catalogs with snares with the signature badge on them can be found till the early 2000s. And they even kind of invented the snom along the way. Now to the second part of this history lesson. Well, in 1995, around 300 kilometers south of the Sonor headquarters in Bad Berleburg, near a small town called Pirmasens, Gerd Stegner was on a mission. He loved to tinker and to bring new life into old drums. He started the company ST Drums in his garage and became a household name in the German vintage drum scene by providing materials and services to restore old beloved drums. This leads us to our next topic and basically the theme of this video. How to make a poor man's signature set. What if you, like many others, like the look of a Sonar signature but you either live in an area where they are extremely rare or you don't have the intense amount of funds needed to acquire such an intense drum set. Well, we had an idea. If you browse through old Sonar catalogs, you will quickly realize that the metal parts used on the Sonar Signature series were not completely exclusive to this series. Quick disclaimer, in this video we focus on the toms and bass drums. The iconic signature snares are a topic for a complete video on its own. Actually, the Signature series had hardware parts in common, or at least similar hardware parts, as the following series. Champion, Phonic, Phonic Plus, Sonor Light, Highlight, and even some Force 2000 and 3000 parts were kind of similar. And last but not least, the Performer series. On the used market in Germany, Performer series drum sets are pretty affordable. For a regular shell set, you pay anywhere between 200 and 500 euros. Well, if we are talking used signature, a 10 inch tom alone will cost you more than that. The plan was simple. Buying a used performer drum set and trying to make it look like a signature. Our goal was not to completely recreate a signature as authentically as possible, but rather to create an homage to the original for a smaller amount of money, but also trying to make a nice playable set and to have some fun along the way. What we bought. On the used market, we found this performer set with the sizes 22, 14, 13 and 10. And it cost us 312 euros, including shipping. While researching, we actually found another performer set with the sizes 22, 16, 13 and 12 for 265 euros, including shipping. This second kit actually is from an earlier production period and has some differences we will address later in the video. So we bought both of those sets and paid a total amount of 577 euros. This will enable us to build one gigantic kit with two bass drums and five toms. And also we have one spare 13 inch tom that we can turn into something else. Buying used Sona. As Forrest Gump once said, buying used Sona in Germany is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you go and get. At this point we wanted to note that if you buy used Sonor drums, especially in Germany, you will see lots of sets that are not 100% original or let's say not 100% like the ones you see in the old catalogs. In most cases the owners were not necessarily collectors but just wanted to play the drums and preferred different sizes or a different look after a couple of years. So they might have added a tom from a later production period to a set from an earlier production period. In our case, the first performer set had the beechwood bass drum and 13 inch tom, but when we removed the heads, we found that the 10 inch and 14 inch toms had different shells. 
After researching, we found out that these sizes could be bought as an add-on. And in later production years, Sona used Poplar shells on Performer series that were also used in the Force 2000 series. The shells are definitely original Sono Performer though. On a side note, it seems like Sonor sometimes had transitioning periods from one series to the next and also sometimes special customer requests. Maybe you could find a drum from a very early production period of one series but still using hardware parts or shells from an older series. We also came across rare color variations of common rep patterns and also alternative hardware colors on some of the drums over the years. So it seems like if there were special requests through a Sonor dealer and the customer had enough funds, Sometimes these requests might have been met. The shells. Let's go back to our topic and talk about the shells. Signature shells were made from 12 plies of wood. They came in a heavy 12 mm thick version made of beech wood and a lighter 7 mm thick birch wood version, so you could choose which one would suit your style and taste better. The outside came in two beautiful veneer choices. Brown swirly bobinga or rosewood from Cameroon and dark, beautiful ebony makassa from Indonesia. Later, they also introduced lacquered finishes and out in the wild, some people came across Scandinavian birch veneers, like the ones used on the Sonor Light series. But the most iconic veneers were the Bubinga and the Makassa ones. For today's standard, the shell sizes on these signature sets were very long. Usually the Tom Tom's length was equal to their diameter, so 10 by 10, 12 by 12 and so on. The floor toms were even longer, so in the old catalogs you can find sizes like 14 by 16, 15 by 17, 16 by 18 and 18 by 19. By the way, usually in Germany we name the diameter first and the depth second. Now imagine carrying an 18 by 19 12 mm beach shell to a gig. Anyways, According to old catalogs, the Performer series had also beach shells made in Germany. 6-ply, 7mm shells for the toms and 9-ply, 10mm shells for their bass drums. As we already found out, they also used poplar wood on later stages of the production. The shells were shorter in comparison and our set now consists of 10x9, 12x10, 13x11, 14x12, 16x16, 22x16 and 22x14. So for today's standard, the performer drum sizes and thickness would actually make more sense compared to the signature ones. And since they were made in the same factory as the signature, we can assume that they might have used the same quality of beech wood, maybe just more plies per shell on the signature drums. A short word regarding bearing edges. The signature series had 45 degree edges, while performer normally used rounded edges with a lot of contact surface. The poplar shells of the 10-inch and 14-inch drum originally came with the 45-degree bearing edge. To replicate the signature and get a more modern sound, we decided to cut 45 degrees on all of the drums. By the way, at this point I have to apologize. In the last video about bearing edges, I pronounced them bearing edges all the time. Well, it's not really my mistake. As you know, we are a German drum company and there is a German national drink that's really deeply embedded in our culture. And sometimes it's even so deeply embedded in our culture that it affects how we pronounce certain words. But from now on, I will stick to the pronunciation bearing edges. In order to match the look of the performer, we decided to remove all of the wrap and put some beautiful bobinga veneers on the shells inside and outside. While most drum makers will put the wood grain horizontally around the shell, Sonor put their veneers usually head to head or perpendicular. So we will do the same way. So in our case, the price for the veneer was 150 euros and the work of putting the veneers inside and outside of every shell altogether would be around 606 euros. If you got a smaller set and for example only want to put veneers on the outside of the shells, it would be way less than this. But for our project, we want to go all the way. If you want a personal offer for your particular drum sizes, please send us an email. Bubinga trees are an endangered species and recently a new law to protect them was made, which is a good thing. By this law, bubinga wood that was produced before 2017 can still be used and sold, but the introduction of new bubinga wood into the market is highly controlled. In our case, we were able to buy an old stock of veneers from our dealer that was made before 2017. This law is also the reason why larger drum manufacturers don't use bubinga wood nowadays. 
Looking at the veneer, you will realize that this type of Fabinga doesn't really look like the original signature veneers. It looks actually closer to the rosewood veneers used on the Phonic series, but with a bit less of these completely straight lines in it. Unfortunately, this is the closest thing that we could find, but we think it still looks amazing. It also still looks like something Sona would have used back then. Our manufacturer told us during the production of this video that they will introduce a more eco-friendly veneer in the future that will look like Bubinga, but will be made of a mix of faster growing trees that are not endangered. But before we could start adding the veneers, we would have to remove the old wraps. The older set still had the original wraps on it. When we tried to remove it, we realized that the material split into three layers that required different removal tactics. First, the purple translucent outer layer, which could just be taken off with no tools. Then, a thin clear layer that was kind of easily removed once you applied some heat and then some nasty tinfoil type of wrap that was annoyingly sticking to the shell and needed to be scraped off. On the other set, there was still the original black gloss wrap on it, but somebody stuck some low quality sparkle wrap on it, which started also splitting into two different layers. Since we released Olivia's video on the topic of re-wrapping, poor wrap jobs like this should hopefully be a thing of the past soon. The upper layer could be removed easily again. The glitter bits flew around our workshop for days. But finally, after some hours of work, we were able to remove all of the wraps from all of the shells. Well, halfway into the process of customizing the set, we thought it would be a great idea to provide an 18-inch bass drum with the set instead of two 22-inch bass drums. So we bought a brand new beach shell, 18 by 16, made in Germany. We sacrificed the 22 by 14 bass drum and took all of its hardware and drilled the 18-inch shell for it. So, while Eric is working on the shells, we will have to look at the drum's hardware. Bass drum. The bass drum of the first performer set has these very nice chrome hoops. Hoops on modern sets usually have a groove for wrap inlays in the middle. But these ones are completely flat on the outside. Early signature models had the same ones. The other bass drum has wooden hoops. So we decided to take the wooden hoops of the 22 inch and new wood hoops for the 18 inch bass drum and put the same veneer on them. The leftover 22 by 14 shell and the metal hoops that were not used could be sold later, so we will deduct this price at the end. On the signature series you can find some drums with the metal hoops and some with wooden hoops. Speaking of the bass drum, early signature models used these teardrop vintage style bass drum claws. The darker, earlier performer set has pretty much the same ones on it. And for the second performer set with these cheap butterfly claws, we had to use 16 used Force 2000 bass drum claws that we luckily still had in stock. Eventually we found out that these were a bit too long to use on our bass drum, so we had to cut the ends off. But if you just look from the outside, they look exactly like the original signature version. Later signature series had these boxy looking claws with the stripes on them. The bass drum tension rods on the signature set were these very big fat ones. One of our performer bass drums has pretty much the same rods, just without the snap lock system that we will get into later. The other one got these phonic ones with the Sonar logo on them. The bass drum mount on the first set is also pretty much the same as the signature and can stay on the drum for our little project. The second older set has a smaller mount that we didn't use. Luckily we know some really cool dealers of used sonar parts, like our friend Chris Yanakopoulos from Drumstrums. He sold us another one of these big signature style looking performer bass drum mounts that we would put on our second bass drum. A quick word about the difference of the brackets and tom mounts in general. The performer series usually has these banana shaped nuts and screws. The signature series on the other hand usually used screws and nuts with a head similar to the bass drum tension rods. The only parts that we will have to compromise will be the bass drum muffler, which is not easy to find on its own, and the bass drum spurs. In the earliest catalogs you can see this version, and the later ones had this more solid version. The performer series just used these regular brackets that were also known from Phonic, Light and Highlight. They also differ regarding the rubber feet they use, but the overall shape of the metal spurs is close enough, so the spurs can stay. One of our bass drums was actually missing the rubber feet, so we used this more modern version from the Sonar catalog to replace them. Another very iconic part of all Sonar drums from this era are the lugs. The feature that sets the signature lugs apart from the performer ones was the patented snap lock system. Sonar luckily still makes these snap lock inserts and springs so we can demonstrate how they work. On the outside of the insert there is a little groove where the spring will fit in. 
the tension rods on the signature series were flattened on two sides. So every half turn of the tension rod, the spring would make the rod snap in place and because of the additional friction, it would keep the tension rods from detuning. You could possibly change all of the insets on all of the lugs in our drum set and it would set you back around 150 euros. However, today these flattened tension rods are not available as a new spare part anymore. And to source all of the tension rods from the Signature series in a kind of good condition will take a lot of time and money. Another alternative would be to grind off the sides from normal Zona tension rods but who wants to do that kind of work? So we take a shortcut and skip the snaplock system on our drum set. There are lots of drum sets without any additional anti-detuning features on them and people seem to be pretty okay with it. Speaking of tension rods, Sona used their own quarter inch thread on their drums roughly from the 1950s to the early 2010s. The thread is thicker compared to the more common 732 thread and if you get a chance to tune one of these old Sona drums, you will see how great they feel. Because Sona still uses tension rods with these threads on their marching drums, the rods are still available brand new in different sizes. Back to the lugs. Here at the drums you can get replica rubber gaskets to protect the shell surface from direct contact with the lugs. So because we use such a nice veneer on our drums, we use these rubber gaskets to protect them. The lugs originally had some yellow foam in them to prevent the springs from rattling. The foam will get soft and sticky over the years, so we recommend you to take some old mattress or foamy chair pillow and cut small rectangles and put them into the lugs. Tom mounts and flotton feet. Let's talk about Tom mounts. The Signature Series used the same Tom mounts as the performer set we have, the so-called flat iron. The flotton brackets of the Signature in the earliest catalogs were these stylish old phonic ones, but they were later replaced by these bigger, more massive ones. The performer ones seem to have a pretty similar bracket, except the wing nut looks different. But on these used sonar drums, you can always get some slight variations, because sometimes parts like a small screw will get lost and later replaced by some different kind of screw. You can find these thick ones that look like the tension rods on our set, or these phonic ones with the stripes and the logo on them. And then finally, you can always find these banana shaped ones, like the ones from the performer series. The rubber feet on the Flotom legs are smaller on the performer set and don't have a retractable metal spike. We don't really need these spikes on our Flotom legs, so we just replace the rubbers with some bigger ones that we still had in stock. By the way, the older set had special holes in the TomTom -tom shells that were originally used for internal mufflers, similar to what the Phonic series had. The mufflers were not in there anymore, so we closed the holes before we added the veneers. Let's talk badges for a second. Signature always had these nice brass plates, which inspired Gerd Stegner to make these badges in the 90s. The Performer series seemed to be available with three different badges. The first ones had these neutral badges, also used in the Panther series. Later, they introduced these simple ones that just say Performer. And then there are also these 80s Vaporwave looking ones. Our set had all three of these on them, but the last one was scratched, so we didn't use it. As you may remember, we had two 13-inch Performer Toms, because we bought two used sets. We wanted to use the spare 13-inch Tom to do something special with it. So before adding the veneers on the shell, we closed all of the existing holes in the shell in order to get a fresh start and being able to make completely new drillings. Because we could only get a limited amount of Bubinga veneer from our dealer, we used this burly birch veneer that we had in stock. In our stock, we also have lots of dead stock sonar parts from the past that were never used on a drum set. And since sonar parts are usually pretty stable, not all of these parts are often needed for replacements or repairs. So luckily we had these beautiful marching snare lugs similar to the ones on the light series snares and these strainers that could be found on the designer series and also on some later marching drums. We shortened the 13 by 11 tom shell to a 13 by 7 and a quarter like the sonar light snare drum and added the hardware parts on it. Now it looks like the little cousin of the famous LD547. What a beauty. Meanwhile, the other shells were ready and it was time to clean the hardware with steel wool and put it back on the shells. We used brand new M4 fixing screws on all the lugs as well as plastic washers on the inside of the shells to keep the metal screws from cutting too deeply into the wood. We also put our stickers inside the drums with details about the restoration. Also, we added brand new sonar plastic washers to all of the tension rods. Once the restoration process was finished, we brought the set with us to the vintage and custom drum meeting 
in Mörfelden Waldorf and showed it to some sonar experts. For their reaction, as well as a sound test of the drum set, please stay tuned and check out the second part of this video that will be uploaded soon. Now let's conclude the video with the prices of the set. This set will be available for sale in our webshop stdrums.com. We want to be pretty transparent with our prices, but please understand that the prices mentioned are valid at the moment of the upload in early 2023 for this particular set. The prices might be changing in the future and also might be very different for the customization or restoration of your particular set. We bought the two used sets for 577 euros in total. And we don't want to make a profit on them because the restoration video is a promotion for us as well. So let's keep that at 577. The veneer, including the work of covering all the drums and bass drum hoops, costs 744 euros and five cents. Changing the bearing edges on all the drums costs 214 euros. The new 18-inch beach shell, including drilling, and a new pair of hoops is 459 euros. The drum heads, as well as the new washers, screws, and hardware parts cost 274 euros and 13 cents. All of the parts we put on the snare drum, as well as the work we had to do on it, excluding the veneer work, cost 255 euros and 98 cents. And finally, the additional work for polishing the drums, removing the old wraps, closing the holes and also assembling the drums are 204 euros. From that final amount we can deduct around 300 euros for the drum parts that were included in the set but we took away to sell separately, like the lugs of the spare 13 inch tom and the cymbal stands and so on. So altogether the final price would be 2428 euros and 16 cents. On top of that there would be shipping and taxes depending on where you live. In Germany, for example, the tax is 19%. So we would end up around 2,889 euros and 51 cents. Well, let's cut it to 2,800. If we take off the taxes again for our customers outside of Germany, the final price would be 2,352 euros and 94 cents plus shipping, taxes, customs, or whatever will be charged depending on the place where you live. At this point you may say, well, for around 2.5 to 3k, I can already buy a used signature set. That might be right in some cases, however, mostly for that money, you would just get a basic setup with three toms and one bass drum. In our case, you get five toms, two bass drums and a custom snare. Also, if you look at the condition of the drum set, it really doesn't look like 40 years old. It's polished and shiny and will be good for many years to come. Wow, you made it till the end of this video. Congratulations. If we forgot any important things on our history lesson or in our details about the drums, let us know in the comments below. If you have a favorite Sonar drum or another famous drum you would like us to cover in the future, also let us know in the comments. Before we forget, thanks a lot to Sonar for allowing us to use their old catalog pictures as well as making these great drums. Thanks also to Rolf Kulm who provided all the old catalogs. Check out his website sonormuseum.de, a virtual museum with a huge collection of information on Sonar drums from all eras as well as digital copies of the old catalogs. If you like the video so far, consider subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video for reactions and the sound demo. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Before we turn this off, please appreciate these outtakes. As well as the work we had to do on it, excluding the veneer work, excluding the veneer wor work, excluding the veneer work, excluding the veneer work, veneer work, excluding the veneer work, excluding the veneer work, excluding the excluding the veneer work would take additional paperwork and would probably and would probably. <laughs>